Good morning and welcome to our Ask the Agronomist segment. We are here again this week with Phil Long, but um, talking a little bit of a different topic than we have been. Yeah, and yeah, trying to get back. I mean, we've kind of been bumping around from precision ag to agronomy, so we're kind of going back to agronomy now and going back to the, the corn side of things. Today. Right, all right, good stuff. So the basis of our conversation today is um, going to be weighing options between traded corn versus conventional. Yeah, I think it's a big thought, a big topic in people's mind, you know, right now, especially mm -hmm. with the ec economic times we're going into, not only last year and this year, but probably, you know, for who knows how many years to come. Right. So a lot of guys are considering it as something we need to talk about, so I thought, let's throw a, we'll do a, maybe a couple series on this and do kind of an introduction today, talk about some things, and then maybe look at some of the economics, the, you know, cons and pro mm -hmm. pros and cons of things, yeah. and, uh, and we'll dive into it a little bit. Okay, sounds good. Um, so let's just start ground mm -hmm. up. We're going to start with BT. You can explain sure. that to yeah, us. Sure, yeah. You wanna, that. So, <laughs> so BT, essentially, you know, when you think of your, your, your traded corn, uh, when you're trying to protect yourself from uh, really any of the Lepidoptera species. So I mm -hmm. say Lepidoptera. So basically, those are, you could think of them as a butterfly, you know, kind of species. But right. BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. And essentially what it is, is it's a bacterium that's derived from the soil. It's in the soil. And so they... Uh, plant breeders uh, inserted it into the corn plants and cotton uh, since really since 1996 we've had that technology so mm -hmm. um, it's been a an amazing improvement over what we had right. before you know we've decreased insecticide uses uh, 30 to 40 percent in the, in the country just by wow. using this trait um, and we'll talk a little bit more about insecticide use and so forth uh, later but it's uh, I guess this is my nerdy side coming out, but it's kind of it's kind of neat how it works, you know, especially since it's you know it's an organic uh, bacterium. But so once a, an insect chews on the corn plant, you know, mm -hmm. a root or part of the tissue or whatever, um, it, it forms a protein in, in them, and, and basically it binds with a, a, a receptor in their gut and causes that gut wall to degrade. So mm -hmm. um, not a fun, pleasant way to die, but but, but essentially you know those crystal proteins. Uh, kill the insect from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So um, they don't really stand a chance. Um, it's very effective. Um, right. We've seen that effectiveness, you know, and I put that up here kind of at the end, the population decline. It's had, a, you know, there's been a lot of studies over the last 15 plus years on this, and, and, and it actually has declined some of the population. Mm -hmm. Now, are they gone? That's kind of what we're going to talk about and stuff. You know, we can't, uh, Mother Nature has a way of doing things that, uh, we just can't we can't predict, but we got to mm -hmm. be on the forefront of and trying to stay ahead of it too. But um, you know, it's actually for guys that don't even use a BT trait um, has even helped them out too. So in right. a roundabout way, it's had a lot of effects, and it, and for the most part, all good effects. Like I said, mm -hmm. one of the big things about having the BT protein is 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 the next as we move I guess into the next slide here is really mm -hmm. it's it's selectiveness. It works on the Lepidoptera uh, species of insects, which I right. put up here. And I thought maybe if you wanted to go through those, you could. <laughs> no, nope, that's all you. <laughs> so I didn't put up all of them here, but you know, if we wanted to dive into the entomology side, you know, I, these may be hard to see, but you know, we have some of our basics here. You know, the corn rootworm up here, the three species mm -hmm. of corn rootworm. We got black cutworm. We've got uh, European corn borer, which is a major pest. You know, why mm -hmm. we use the, the double pros and so forth. Um, army worm, uh, and then later in the season, and like I said, I don't have them all up here, but um, we've got western bean cutworm mm -hmm. and, and corn earworm. Okay. So, um, really, you know, when you think about BT and what it does, it's a season-long control. You know, it's 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 made in the plant, and any time one of these these uh, larval insects chew on it, mm -hmm. uh, they're they're going to get that, and it's going to basically you know take them down from the inside out. Like I said, so uh, season-long control is really the the benefit of these. And, and the other thing you got to think about is these are, I would call these the, the big feeder insects. These are not, you know, they don't do a little bit of damage. They do mm -hmm. a lot. You right. know, guys that have had issues with the army worm in the spring or corn root worm, you know, takes it down the base of the plant. You know, when you have, you know, basically corn with snubbed roots or, you know, holes bored through them uh, out of production, you're going to have lodging. You're going to have all these kind of issues mm -hmm. uh, to, to deal with. And I got black cut worm up there too, I think, if I mentioned that. So just it covers a wide variety of some of the worst pests that we have right. in corn. Yep, so. and the overall, you know, way up on the or population, excuse me, going down. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, that's been a that's been a blessing, you know, maybe mm -hmm. that's not what it, the intention was, but yep. it's just, it's a very great uh, biological insecticide that, mm -hmm. 
Um, we've had the, the, the opportunity to use farmers to use and, and have gained a lot of benefits from it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and as we'll talk about more. So I threw this slide in here to go along with the pictures just to help people right. understand, you know, this is European corn borer uh, life cycle just to show them kind of the generations. You yeah, know, some of these sure. pests we deal with more than one generation depending on your geography and mm -hmm. in the Midwest. So uh, it's not it's not that uh, you know the, the BT traits in the plant, so it's there all season long. Right. You know, so you're not necessarily spraying three or four times throughout the season to try mm -hmm. to control different pop generations of yep. of insects. Yeah. All right. Very interesting. Um, and then here we kind of get into some of the options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, if you're going with conventional corn, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to do an insecticide option. I guess that's what I called it. Yeah. Uh, versus the traded option or the technology option, which we'll get into more in, the, in another series, maybe comparing some, mm -hmm. some, some costs and the economics of it. But I just wanted to talk about some of the basics when it comes to the insecticide. So to start with, you know, if you're getting a traded corn, you're going to be, if you're doing a smart stacks kind of corn or one with below ground protection, right. you're going to want to put an in furrow application of a pest, insecticide, excuse me, mm -hmm. down. You know, so number one, you need you need environmental conditions, just like a lot of other things. You know, yep. for that thing to work, you need to have moisture and so forth for it to work. Um, it will control other pests. That's one side benefit to putting that down. There is mm -hmm. a cost associated with it, but you're going to be able to control things like wire worms or white grubs or things that aren't in that Lepidoptera, you mm -hmm. know, classification of, of <coughs> insects. Um, <coughs> there's also uh, things like so. You know, I talked about the infurl, so we have that's yep. that's one part of it. But then there's the above ground part as well. Right. Yes. You know, we when 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 you're dealing with two generations of insects, you, you may be spraying. And the reason I put this up here this is actually a study out of Minnesota, and uh, so they they were showing the effectiveness of herbicide sprays compared to using the trait. So that's kind of what you're seeing here. And, and one of the things they mentioned was you have roughly a 10 to 14 day window per generation. So just mm -hmm. say you're doing one generation of insect, you have roughly a 10 to 14 day window to make sure you get that sprayed right. to get roughly 69 or 90 percent effective control on that. Okay. If you had two generations, that second generation is going to be harder to control. Yep. You know, why is that? Because the plant's bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, the plant is much taller. This could be around tassel, you know, or right. time of tassel. So it's a very tall plant. You're gonna have to run a high boy. You're gonna have to spray with an airplane, mm -hmm. you know, which, uh, as far as throwing an insecticide down, is not what a lot of people prefer to do. Right. But also, those those worms, those larvae, are in places that are hard to reach mm -hmm. with an insecticide. Plants bigger. They're in spots that are harder to reach. Don't get as good a coverage. That mm -hmm. kind of thing. So the other thing I forgot to mention on that top one there too is sometimes you know putting a granular uh, insecticide down at planting. Um, also decreases your effectiveness of your herbicide too. So if you're using mm -hmm. uh, residual or something else, you got to pay attention to the interactions that that may right. have with a, a granular insecticide. Mm -hmm. So then as far as the traded options, yeah. So we've talked. Well, we've already mentioned some of the the positives, I guess, mm -hmm. of the of the traded side, and we'll talk about that more in, in our second uh, part as well. But uh, one of the studies I looked at, uh, they showed basically they showed that the BT trait decreases losses by over half compared to, and this is compared to the insecticide option. Mm -hmm. So if you're controlling, and this was on European corn borer, so in season European corn borer control, if you're compared to like a double pro kind of, you know, yep. above ground control trait, uh, the trait itself decreased losses by half compared to, wow. so, so you may be using that insecticide, spraying it out there thinking you're getting decent control, but if you would have been using, the, what they showed was if you would have been using the trait. Mm -hmm. You would have knocked that in half again. Wow, so, that's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, and, and a lot of you can go down the line. I looked at a lot of research, you know, and there's there's stuff that says it's I at least matching, if not usually more effective mm -hmm. than a, than an insecticide. And just like I said before, you know, it depends on what you're trying to control. You know, mm -hmm. what generation that may be in the crop. So there's a lot of lot of things you got to think about because you got to remember if that larva eats that plant, mm -hmm. it's going to get it in its system. System, right. So, all right, and then you have a fun um, number kind of. Yeah, so number this is just two. essentially, I, I was reading that out of the American Society of Agronomy Journal, one of the publications I get, and uh, they mentioned that over the last 15 years, farmers have, have seen a benefit over, of over $500 million from increased yields and decreased costs of insecticides. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's a, that's a huge number. Right. You know, that more effective control, mm -hmm. you know, and then, like I said, 
I didn't put it up here, but you're not dealing with an insecticide, you know, and I, we grew up, I guess, in the generation of, of not having to deal with that as much, you know, mm -hmm. these, these traits have been out since 96 or so, so, you know, I've been more familiar with the BT traits, and, and I'm thankful for what they've provided us, not having to mess with that, you know. Fortunately, we have on the, on the insecticide, there's, you know, things like smart boxes to help uh, the farmer not have to touch it, right. not have yeah. to inhale it, you know, there's mm -hmm. options to make it better but it's still an insecticide yeah. and we're still mammals so there's still a risk there associated with dealing with it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I put up there is target pests and I don't think I mentioned this earlier but it's a very selective biological insecticide. So the other benefit, side benefit of that is it controls those ones I showed but it also doesn't harm the beneficial ones that are out right. there. Right, yeah, which you know? is a very big point. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're putting an in furrow application and then spraying over the top Typically, and you can be more selective, but typically a lot of those insecticides are going to take out a lot mm -hmm. of other insects that might be beneficial. You right. know, we have a lot yeah. of beneficials out there that help control the other pest populations, mm -hmm. you know, so the fact that BT can control the ones that we want to control that are damaging the plant and not hurt the ones that we don't want to hurt mm -hmm. um, is really a really nice benefit. Right. All right. So, Good stuff. Um, and next week we're going to be talking a little bit about the resistance. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit, you know, yep. jump into, dive into a little bit of the resistance issues and then talk about why we need to plan for that and then mm -hmm. some of the economics, you know, the, the hows and the whys on the economic side and see if we can pick that apart a little bit too. Yeah, so. all right. Good stuff. Very informative. Well, thanks for joining us. Yep. No Anything else to add? Nope, I, I think we're good. We're covered it all. No, no, we're just dealing with a little bit of fun uh, weather out there, you know, the, the rain and the snow mix and all the <laughs> yeah. fun falling and stuff, time of the winter. But uh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll make it back here next week and uh, hopefully talk about that. Right. Well. We are happy to be here in more ways than one. <laughs> all right, thanks for tuning in and have a good day.